everybody, this is Joel Kahn, cardiologist. Welcome to my Health Heart Circle. It's Heart Month, it's February, and I've been looking forward to making some additional educational material that you can enjoy. A little bonus here in our Heal Circle community, and what a wonderful community it is. So let's just dive into a short take on a really important topic, which is blood pressure. I mean, you hear about it all the time. You have it checked at the doctor's office, the pharmacy, and maybe you have a home blood pressure cuff. So why do we even focus on it? And I think you get the clue. Blood pressure is one of the most critical measurements and body physiologic processes that exist. How important? A massive study over the last few years called the Global Burden of Disease Study, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, found that elevated blood pressure is the number one cause of death in the whole world. Number one, because high blood pressure leads to stroke, high blood pressure leads to aging of blood vessels and heart attacks, high blood pressure leads to aging of kidneys, leg circulation, all throughout the body. So for me, having a home blood pressure cuff isn't really an option. Maybe you have a scale at home, maybe you have a thermometer at home. You need to have a good arm. I like digital. All you gotta do is put it on with a little Velcro, sit and relax, and you can check your blood pressure. And these things will last you a decade or more. Now there is a little technique to checking your home blood pressure. You actually wanna do it quietly. You wanna sit down. I like to sit on a couch where I can support my arm about heart level. You could check it standing, but it's really better to sit. You wanna really get in an environment that's calm. A lot of people get afraid of that Velcro noise of the whole process, although at home it's a little less intimidating than when a nurse or a doctor does it in an office. And you wanna do it actually, and this is the most important, three times in a row. I happen to have at home an automatic digital arm blood pressure cuff that won't show me my blood pressure until all three times have been taken. It'll do it, it'll give me a 30 second break, it'll do it, it'll give me a 30 second break, then it'll do it a third time, then it'll show me the average. But at any rate, if you don't have that still, do that process, focus mainly on the third measurement. It takes the fear factor out of it. Now we've had debate, there was a major study called the SPRINT study. It led to a change in the guidelines that said, Really, normal blood pressure is more about 120 over 70. In fact, if you go to native cultures where they don't have fast food restaurants and too much uh, pollution in the air, many of them have blood pressures around 100 over 60, but really ideal for optimal brain health, blood vessel health, organ health, kidney health, about 120 over 70. And if it's above 130 over 80, again, remember top number is called systolic, created by when the heart squeezes, Bottom number is called diastolic, when the heart relaxes every cycle. But much above 130 over 80 is high blood pressure. There's stage one prehypertension, stage one, stage two. You don't have to memorize that. Uh, but over the long run, you'd really like to see your numbers consistently good. And there's no way to know. Some people do get flushed in the face. Some people feel their head kind of full when their blood pressure's up. It's usually a silent situation. Now you don't need to monitor your blood pressure when you exercise. You're not gonna put that cuff on your arm and use it on the treadmill. There is indeed a normal pattern of blood pressure and if you've ever had an exercise treadmill stress test, that is part of the evaluation. But I'm more than satisfied in this wonderful community if you'll just do it at rest. And if it's consistently good, maybe once a month, it's a good idea. If it's abnormal, you do wanna make it a habit at least a couple times a week to be checking your blood pressure. That's what I do at home. It was 116 over 70 this morning. I was very pleased to see that. My little puppy was next to me and there is some data that petting your puppy lowers your blood pressure too. So you don't have to get a pet, but it is a good tool and it's a lot safer than a medication. Uh, if it's consistently up, we talk about lifestyle, exercise, weight loss, whole food, plant diets. Hibiscus tea lowers your blood pressure. Turmeric, curry powder can lower your blood pressure. Uh, and certainly weight loss is one of the most effective ways to healthy lower blood pressure, maybe using some fasting protocol. But in heart month, that's the message. Focus on blood pressure, know your blood pressure. Actually, if you have access to a doctor's office and you're curious, there is something called the 24-hour blood pressure monitor, an ambulatory blood pressure monitor. If you can tolerate it, it goes up and down about 50 times in 24 hours, even while you sleep, because that actually provides the most accurate measurement. It's very inexpensive and very simple with no safety concerns. So make a promise here to health, 
heart circle that you are going to check your blood pressure, maybe commit to getting yourself a good home blood pressure cuff. Again, you want it on the arm, maybe Bluetooth to your phone, let's get state-of-the-art technology, uh, and use that to gauge your risk, your health, and your success at this great journey called Heart Health in February month. Have a great day.